Hey everyone, this is Lisa from Life in Layout. Happy 4th of July. Today I'm going to be using this simple stories collection called Hometown USA. And I'm actually going to be using something from Scrapbook Generation. A couple of years ago, and when I say that, I mean 2016, I purchased a layout kit from Scrapbook Generation. It included instructions on how to create two double page layouts from just four sheets of paper, as well as a sticker sheet. I tend to save the instructions on those because I know that I can reuse those with so many different layouts. And that's what you're going to get today. That's right, two double page layouts all in one video. The main premise behind the ability to stretch this paper is to make sure that you're using those cut apart cards. And you do tend to get that like wall of photos look. But I definitely spice it up quite a bit with some of the embellishments that I add to the layout. So for this first particular layout, it calls for photos on the left hand side. The sketch itself called for three four by sixes as well as three three by fours and then the ability to add three three by four cards and then also a small little two by two photo over on the far left. That didn't work out for my photos, so I just swapped out a 4x6 photo for two 3x4 photos. There's one sheet of paper that is going to span across both layouts, and it's important that you cut the paper correctly to make sure that you have the right orientation on both of the layouts. I'm trying to decide between the quilt pattern, which has the stars on the background, or the floral. I do end up using the quilt pattern. The instructions have you cut the paper 2 by 12 and you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the orientation of the paper. Specifically for me, there is words on that star paper and so I wanted to make sure that it was going in the right order. Once you cut down the 2 by 12, then you're going to cut down the remaining piece to 10 by 10 and that will leave a 10 by 12 as well. The 2x10 is going to go on the far left hand side and then the 10x10 is going to cover a majority of the right hand side of the layout. I pulled out my Simple Stories basic paper because I was one paper short. So where the instructions calls for a stripe paper, I decided to add this wood grain. The instructions tell you to cut down a second piece of paper to 12x4. That 12x4 is going to be added to the right hand side of the layout. And then the other sheet will be used on the other layout. I decided to add the blue floral to my right hand side of the layout and then adding my wood grain strips to the left and right hand side. I was trying to decide which 3x4 card I was going to add and I really wasn't sure which one I wanted to add. I wasn't liking any of them. I thought maybe about cutting down the basic card. On the back of that wood grain there is a grid pattern so I thought maybe I could use that grid pattern and some of the stickers on the sticker sheet to fill it in but the stickers were just way too small. I really liked this four by six card, but I knew that by cutting it down to a three by four, it wasn't gonna look right. I go back to the sticker sheet and try a couple more items, but I just wasn't feeling it. I pull the three by four cards out again, thinking maybe I could figure something out, but just nothing was really sitting with me. So I decided to take a break from that and go ahead and adhere everything down. These photos were taken by my amazing photographer. I think I've talked about it before in a couple of other layouts. She takes family photos of us quite a few times a year, at least four, sometimes five times a year, depending on what's going on, as well as depending on how amazing her setups are. This was the first time that I had done a 4th of July themed with her, and I'm so glad that I did capture these because I love the way that they came out. She did have a backdrop that had fireworks on it, but we only used that for a couple of photos. The wind was just way too crazy that day. But there's a historical house in the downtown area where I live and we were able to get some amazing shots there as well. For the right hand side of the layout I needed to make sure that that paper was in the right orientation because there are some words in the background. Now spoiler alert on the other layout I didn't cut it correctly but I just went with it because I did end up covering up most of it. Once I got that 10 by 10 piece of paper down I went ahead and added the 4 by 12 piece of paper. I thought about putting the red circles on instead of the blue florals, but I just really loved the contrast of that blue floral against the cream colored star paper. 
and then I do add the quarter inch strip of the wood grain on top and bottom and I feel like that really sets off that blue paper and frames it against the cream star paper. So these photos are of my mom and myself as well as Eli and my older nephew and then one of the foster kids that my mom had for quite a while. I actually think about three years he was in my mom's care. For the two photos that are on the right hand side of the layout, I did go ahead and use some fun foam on both of those just to get them to stand out a little bit against that star paper as well as the floral. I was trying to decide if I wanted the photos in the center of the right hand side or a little off center. I did pull out this banner piece and added it, but I just didn't like the way that it looked. So I decided to take a break from putting the photos down and go ahead and put my stitching on. I was actually cropping with Nicole from Collie Bing. She suggested that I stitch around the 10 by 10 and I had never done that before. So it did take me a little bit to try to figure it out. And actually off camera, I do like rip this up because I didn't make it straight. And I am currently in a stitching mode. So if there's an opportunity to stitch on a layout, I'm definitely going to do it. So here I'm just showing you that this heart that I decided to stitch what I decided to do was use the stripes as a guide for where my holes were going to be. Once I got the holes on either side of the stripes, then I just filled in the center of the holes if I felt like it was missing something or needed additional stitching. Anytime that you have a point, you definitely want to make sure that you have a hole in that area so that you can make sure that the stitching is precise in that area. I also decided to add stitching to the quilting area over on the left hand side. Basically I poked a hole anywhere that there was a point in the quilt pattern. And as you can see here, I did slow it down where I added the stitching. I did add the stitching in blue and I felt like it was really dark. I also added the stitching to that heart as well as the three by four card in the upper right hand corner. I just added the white parts of the black. And then I stitched around the square of the 10 by 10 on the right hand side. Now this is the paper that I ended up taking up because it just didn't work. The stitching was a little crooked and because I was doing a full square around the 10 by 10, I definitely needed it to be straight but I did use the paper to mat the photos on the other layout, as well as this little two by two square that I'm going to put over on the far left hand side. I decided to put that photo on an angle so it looks more like a diamond. He is holding a sparkler and his face is a little scared from the sparkler. I think this is actually the first time he was holding one. Now you'll notice that the sticker sheet is missing quite a few pieces of stickers. I actually went ahead and worked on the other one, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, because I knew that there were specific stickers that I wanted on that layout and I didn't want to use them on this one. So I did decide to put the photos off center to the left. And then I also added the USA sticker as well as the colorful flag. And I add it to the bottom, but I end up pulling that up here shortly. I tried to make those balloons work. It just really wasn't working over there. So I did decide to go ahead and pull out the firework that was on the sticker sheet. And I did put that up on fun foam over there. I also added a little sparkler and I move it around quite a bit before deciding to put it underneath the photo a little bit, but also underneath the firework. And then I added a light blue star to that cluster. This is where I decided that that flag just needed to be taken up. It just wasn't looking right. I felt like it was really far away from the USA and the cluster just wasn't working for me. I also decided to put that flag up on fun foam and add it underneath the wood grain. So that cluster is going to be a large cluster in that area. And my journaling is also going to go in that area. I then found a heart sticker that matched the heart that's on the left hand side that I decided to stitch. So I thought that that would be perfect addition right next to the word USA. I really wanted to make this watermelon work, but it just wasn't fitting in with these photos at all. But I tried quite a few different places. I added three stars in the blue, red and cream color. And then I was struggling a little bit with the fun foam. So I did go ahead and add some liquid adhesive. I decided to add a phrase sticker that says hometown USA. And then underneath that, it says, I love the USA. 
Then I had the phrase sticker that said little firecracker and I added that to the far left hand side. And then the last sticker that I'm going to add over on the right says red, white, and blue. Now I'm going to start working on the other layout. I have already cut out the paper because it was the same paper that I had used from the previous layout. These photos are going to be from the 4th of July, obviously, and it's going to be photos of us in the pool. So I was really pulling more towards the red paper for this side. So I knew that I wanted to use that red circle paper, which on the back has the blue florals that I used in the other layout. This layout also calls for a grid of photos. So on the left hand side, I went ahead and added two four by sixes as well as three three by fours. And then for the right hand side, it does call for two four by six photos to be in the portrait, but I didn't really have two photos that would work that way. And I had a bunch of photos of the kids playing in the pool. So I just used the Project Life app to put four two by three photos on one four by six and then two three by four photos on the other. And I'm going to add those to the right. I did decide to go ahead and leave the branding strip on this cream cardstock. Every time I cut the branding strip off, it doesn't cut completely off. The barcode shows a little bit. So I thought that if I would just put the photos down, since I was doing a wall of photos on one side and a wall of paper on the other, that it would cover it up. And then I could cut whatever I needed to cut off the top, which is not quite a quarter of an inch. I did decide to put the one three by four photo of my mom and I on the wood grain paper, just to set it off a little bit, since there was so much pool water in all of the photos. After I got the grid of photos down, I realized that I was supposed to have a strip of the wood grain at the bottom. And I thought about pulling it up for maybe a half a second, but then I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go with the wood grain at the top and leave the bottom by itself. I also thought about putting the wood grain on top of the photos, but because I had the three by four photo of my mom and I on that wood grain, it wouldn't have looked right either. At first I thought I would just cover up that gap with the wood grain paper, but then I realized that the paper probably would not set correctly. So I did go ahead and use my T-square ruler and X-Acto knife to trim off the photos so that they were even with the card and then went ahead and added that wood grain strip. This is the paper that I was talking about where it does have words and the words are not going in the right order, but I just went with it. I do cover it up quite a bit. On the right hand side of the layout is the 12 by 8 piece of paper and that lines up perfectly with the photos that are on the left hand side. I go ahead and add the quarter inch strip in the wood grain to finish off that section and I really think that the quarter inch strips really help finish a layout. The instructions called for one little photo over on the right hand side which expanded from the paper that's on the left and I thought it was weird when I did the original layout, I did the same thing. It was just very awkward. I do feel like I did a really good job of closing it in with this particular layout. This is where I was talking about where I knew that I had specific stickers that I wanted to use on this layout. So I did work back and forth between these two layouts. The kit from Scrapbook Generations is a completely different piece of paper and I believe a completely different company. I do not think it's Simple Stories, but the red truck, the bicycles and the little red wagon seem to be a theme across all sticker sheets with the 4th of July. The one in the Scrapbook Generation sketch called for a red truck sticker as well as a tricycle and a bicycle. So a little bit different than this one, but the same concept. This is that paper that I had pulled out where I had poked the holes incorrectly, but I still wanted to use it. So I did go ahead and mat these photos on that green colored cardstock. I did put a little tiny border between the photos at the top and the photos at the bottom, just simply because again, there's so much pool water, so much blue, that having just that thin line between the photos really helps separate it. And then of course, pulling out my layering guides to make sure that I have a perfect layer around each one of the four sides. And I really like the way that that cream color offsets the red paper. I do go ahead and pull in that banner piece. I knew that it would be perfect in this area. I did go ahead and put the grid of photos over on the right hand side up on fun foam. And I am using some ATG as well as liquid adhesive to make sure that it is straight. I decided that I wanted these balloons to come up from the wagon. At first I thought it would be cool to have it like at the end of the wagon, but I did end up putting it like they were attached to the handle of the wagon. 
Then I start working on the cluster that's going to be on the right hand side. I have a blue square that has the heart flag like the other layout and then right underneath it I have a word phrase that says let freedom ring. I do go ahead and put the blue square up on fun foam and right next to it I decided to add a pie sticker. I do also put that pie up on fun foam and then I thought it would be cool to tuck in a little can of soda right behind the pie. I added three little stars in the navy, the light blue, and the white. And then I added a couple of additional word phrases down at the bottom. One says stars and stripe, and the other one says celebrate. I tried to make that watermelon piece work and wasn't happy with it, so I held off on it once again. I did have the balloons up on fun foam, so I went ahead and adhered it to the handle of the wagons. And then I'm going to add this sticker here that says celebrate. Now from my collection, I do have these rub-ons that are supposed to be fireworks and they're in a silver color. I believe they're made by Pebbles. I could not find my rub-on tool, so I pulled out my bone holder and was working through it with that, but was struggling so much. Then I remembered when I was cleaning out my box a couple of months ago, I moved a lot of the pieces that I don't use often to a shoe rack that I have that hangs up behind my door. I keep a lot of things in that shoe rack of things that I don't use very often, but not quite ready to get rid of. And this rub-on tool is one of those things. I don't use rub-ons very often. I'm not a big fan of them, but I feel like the firework rub-on is a perfect thing to have. It just added a special little touch to this particular layout. I did have the rub-ons in like a red and blue as well, but it was more of like a bright red and a bright blue as opposed to these burgundy and navy colors. So I just stuck with the silver fireworks. And I used quite a bit of them, which I'm always excited about because that's something that it's hard to use. Like rub-ons are just not my favorite at all. So let me know in the comments below. Do you guys still use rub-ons? Do you still have some in your stash? After I got the fireworks down, I went ahead and added the watermelon. I was determined to kill this sticker sheet. Now granted, it's only a six by 12 sticker sheet, but I wanted to make sure that I used every single piece. So some of these pieces I might not have used in other layouts if I wasn't determined to kill that sticker sheet. I went ahead and added the flag over to the far right. And then I also added a sticker that says All American. This is where I decided to go ahead and add in these square stickers. Again, I was trying to kill this sticker sheet and it also filled in that awkward space next to that photo. So these stickers say food, friends, family, having a blast and happy Independence Day. I froze the video at this point because the only thing that's left on the sticker sheet is a can of Coke that says America, as well as two more phrase stickers that say backyard barbecue and it's parade day. Since I added those little squares, I decided that I needed a couple of more fireworks. So I go ahead and add those to the top right. I hope everyone is enjoying their 4th of July, whether you're celebrating it with family or friends, or it's just another day for you if you're not here in America. I hope that you are still having an amazing day. Let me know in the comments below, what are you guys doing for the 4th of July? Are you doing anything fun? I did go ahead and add that one sticker that says backyard barbecue. I added that right underneath the celebrate three by four card. I was cropping with Nicole and I showed her that I only had two things left and she was like, uh, no girl, we're going to find a place for it on your layout. I did end up moving the soda can from the far right hand side and I stuck it inside the wagon and then added the America soda can behind the pie. And then the one little phrase sticker that was left, it's a parade day. I added that to the other layout. And then that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this double, double page layout for the 4th of July. I really wanted to give you guys something extra special on this holiday and show you that you can really create multiple pages with just a few little embellishments. So for this particular double page layout, I only used four sheets of pattern paper, the four sheets of cardstock, and then one sheet of six by 12 stickers, which I think is pretty amazing to get two double page layouts completed with that. 
All right, if you enjoyed this video, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already and you want to see more double page layout inspiration, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope that you have a scrappy day.